let the animal come, step right there, and go flying up. This one is one of those hanging traps that we were talking about. They stick their head through the snare wire, they trip the bait stick, and they go up, okay? As tension between the U.S. and China builds, the U.S. military is shifting its focus from the Middle East to the Asia-Pacific region. That's why Army soldiers are training not only to fight in the jungle, but also to survive there. Do not use this stuff to start a fire and or burn as a fire fuel. It has little fibers in it. When you burn it, it goes off into the air and you inhale it. It'll give you a sore throat. At the Army's 12-day jungle operations training course in Hawaii, students spend a day learning survival skills, how to collect and purify water, forage for food, start fires, build shelter, and set traps to catch animals. Skills that could mean the difference between life and death. This is a desalination station, okay? We had a fire going this morning and we started at seven, it went out right after the first class got here and this is how much water is in there. But you see how clear it is? Hey, that'll do. That That'll keep you alive. That'll keep you alive, absolutely, right? In jungle school, instructors teach trainees that people can only survive three days without water. And that three days is if I'm just sitting here hanging out by the campfire, right? If I'm up busting these gulches, collecting, cutting trees down to build shelter, foraging for foods, everything like that, I'm looking at more like a day and a half. The ability to purify water is a critical survival skill. The first technique involves building a layered structure to filter water through three elements found in the jungle environment. The first one here is going to collect any big particles. The uh, moss is going to oxidize any of the bacteria or diseases that's in it. And then your third one is going to pull any of the finer, smaller particles out. And it's also going to add a little bit of a flavor, charcoal flavor. The next technique students learn is how to extract water from jungle vegetation. This is an above ground still. You're going to take a clear bag of some facet, right? You're going to wrap up a bushel of green leaves and you're gonna tie it tight. You're gonna ensure that it is in direct sunlight. What's happening is that sunlight is hitting that bag and you're basically baking those leaves, pulling all the condensation and moisture out of the leaves. That wouldn't be like considered cancerous at some point or in the bag. I mean, in a, in a survival situation, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I would want to, you know, feed my body with that, water. That, that, risk, that risk over that reward, right? Actually, I think we're all like really wanting to know, and you tell us the science behind drinking our urine. So I would not, but if you are well hydrated, you can for the first time. As you go on and on and on, and you get dehydrated and dehydrated, what happens to our the color of our urine? Dark. That darkness that is showing in that is the imperfections that are coming out of your body. As the animal comes in, they trip the stick and it falls right on like that, all right? Instructors show a variety of man-made traps that can be used to capture animals in the jungle. This one is one of those hanging traps that we were talking about, okay? If you guys see this one right here, we're using a- Catching trap. prey with traps is a numbers game. Students are taught that for every 15 traps they set, only one will work, and each trap can be scaled up or down to capture prey of different sizes. When the bird steps on the bowline, line, I get caught in there, they're stuck, right? They're not going just like the chicken was this morning. Catching food is only half of the job. Students are taught two different methods, to kill or dispatch a chicken and prepare it for consumption. After the lesson, students get to eat the meat from the chickens they've dispatched. It's not bad. It needs a little bit of seasoning, but right now I could eat anything. We're talking about shelters today. All right, who here has built a shelter before? A lot of you guys, all right? Trainees learn about the different types of shelters they can build with materials found in the jungle, such as an A-frame or a lean-to. How much effort do you think it took to build this? What kind of lashings it took? Or how much cordage it took to build it? Does anybody think they want to build a shelter like this tonight? So probably not, right? The trainees learn how to make lashings, which bind the components of their shelter using materials like vines, 
550 cord, fishing line, and sinew, which can be derived from the dried tendons and ligaments of wild animals they've consumed. There's a one current theme every country you'll go to. All right, you will find some man-made trash somewhere. It's a way you can braid this trash together all right, and turn it into something you can use for lashings. All right, so give myself a loop, give myself something to pinch with. All right, I'm just gonna grab one side here. All right, I'm gonna twist this away from me, keeping it in between my fingers. Equipped with the knowledge of what works as a lashing, the trainees learn how to use them to make rigid structures. If I lay these parallel to each other, all right, I begin wrapping, all right? So what I'm looking for here is just going, making circles, all right, back and forth. All right, what we've done now is make these to re-add them out, all right, add some rigidity to it. All right, if these are a bit longer, I can lay another brace between these, all right, so I'll build my A-frame off of them. I'll tell you guys, this is a basic level course of knowledge. You guys are not gonna be experts by the end of this, right, where you're gonna start a fire with nothing but bare hands and wood. All right, we'll go over some primitive methods. Make Students learn about the tools. We call it the hot dog pencil techniques and you're going to make contact with your steel wool and natural resources they can use to start a fire in the jungle you got your natural tinder right so tinder is going to be that material that's fine that real fine material that accepts heat a way to make yourself a nice little tinder bed is what we call bird nesting twist it get it nice and soft you can bend it and twist it, you can rub it between your hands, see all the fibers falling off, that's what you want. After the lesson, students are tasked with starting their own fires using materials found in the jungle. So go ahead, put this fire out, and try to start a fire without your lighter. Okay. Got it. There we go, Just lay it down. Hallucinations and death. For this, I'm thinking more plants like mushrooms where again, you can step on them and they release those spores into the air. So sometimes you don't even have to eat or come into direct skin to skin. Students contact. learn about which jungle plants are edible and which ones are poisonous and they sample certain jungle plants to determine signs of edibility. Test for contact poisoning by placing a piece of the plant part you are testing on the inside of your elbow or your wrist. They start by smelling the plant for signs of poison. They rub it on their skin to see if it produces a reaction. If there is no reaction, trainees put the plant in their mouth and chew it. If there's still no reaction, the student swallows the plant. Students learn about the different edible fruits and plants found in the jungle. Tastes pretty good. Not as sweet as like the candy. Other thing, like processed coconut. But it's not bad. Does it taste like coconut flavored though? Like at all? Yeah, very like mild though. So not not as strong. 